Hello and welcome to another session of Lunner at Home with the Crawford Art Gallery. Today Inge and I are going to concentrate on drawing and we are going to draw some bread. Um, we thought bread would be a good option because everybody would have some at home most likely. Um, it could be a sliced pan, um, some soda bread, um, any type of bread really. I have some seed bread that was made yesterday. Um, now we're not going to concentrate on necessarily drawing the bread realistically or the, the slice or section of the bread realistically. What we're going to concentrate on is trying to capture the texture of the bread. Um, now I can feel the bread and it, I suppose texture is one of those things in art and, and in life in general where it's, it's visual, we see it, but also we can often feel it. And this bread is quite um, knobbly and lumpy, there's quite a lot of seeds in it. Um, so we're going to try and capture that with a variety of um, dry materials. I'm going to be using the dry materials today, so I have some pastels, some charcoal pencils, um, some graphite, which is, is a form of pencil really, except it gives a softer colour and is a bit more spreadable. Um, and also um, a biro can draw in ordinary biros as well and they leave quite a nice mark. Um, I, I probably would have mentioned before that if we use, the more senses we use when we're drawing the better. So um, today I can feel, so I'm using my sense of touch as well as my sense of, sense of sight, but I can also smell um, because this is freshly baked so um, it's still got that lovely um, warm um, homely order of, of odour of bread. Um, the, the more senses you, you use in your drawing, um, the more um, you can capture uh, the essence of the object, I think. Um, because if, if we use our other senses, not only our visual, our brain is learning more and more about the object we're trying to capture in, in, um, in pencil or charcoal or paint or whatever um, medium we're using to try and um, artistically portray this object or this thing, in, in this case, piece of bread. Uh, so what I'm going to do today, um, since I'm, I'm drawing and Inga's going to be using the, the wetter materials such as paint, ink, etc. I'm going to take some pastel just to create a basic colour underneath and then I'm going to use my my pencil, graphite and biro to try and create the texture um, of this, this piece of bread. So I'm going to have to put on my glasses because it's it's very detailed actually the, the bread there's lots of little grains and um, in there that I wouldn't see otherwise. So firstly I'm going to lay down a layer of colour. So I have some chalk pastels, I have a yellow and a beigey colour and a brown to try and get you know similar enough near enough to the colour of the bread. I'm going to just smooth that with my finger there. Put a little bit more in. Now oh, there we go. I'm going to take some graphite to start with. It leaves a lovely soft silvery line. So um, again I'm going to just feel my bread and it feels very bumpy and kind of kernelly with all the little seeds in there. So I'm just going to look at one of the seeds and do a little and I'm going to continue this section here and I'm not going to um, try and draw in all the details because if you were to look at this um, there are so many details, so many little seeds and bits of flour and God knows what else in there. It would take you all day. You get lost in it, which would be a lovely thing if we had all day, but, but we don't here really. But you at home might have a bit more time and you could spend more time drawing, drawing in some of the details if you so wish. I'm just going to try and give a sense of the texture that I'm seeing here and, and feeling um, in the bread. Now, with my piece of graphite, um, you'll notice that I'm pressing down at times quite hard and then I'm getting quite a strong mark when I do that. But then I'm gently doing the next couple of marks. I'm varying my mark making, as they'd say in, in, 
in I suppose in art really you vary your mark making and this actually leads to a more interesting drawing and um, interesting for the viewer to look at but also more interesting for me the drawer and for you the drawer also so it, it's it's a good um, tip really to try and vary your mark making I'm going to take a pencil and just we can contrast the pencil and the graphite. They're both made of carbon. Um, pencils, I understand, have some a type of glue in them to bind them together, which the, the carbon doesn't have. So you can see there's a bit of a difference there, um, despite them being the same um, B or hardness level. Now I'm leaning a bit harder here just to get one of those little kernels in. And if I wanted to um, delineate the, um, the crust here, and it's quite hard and dense there, I can just draw a little bit harder, lean a little bit harder on, on the paper. Now you'll notice I'm, I'm not drawing a straight line like that, or even a, a continuous line like this. I'm slightly changing the pressure as I move along the surface of the paper. And this makes the line more interesting and to the eye. Now down here, you notice where the, the bread was cut by the knife. It's more condensed, or it might have been to do with the baking as well, folks, but let's say it's the knife. It's more condensed, it's less bumpy. So what we can do down here with our drawing with our pencil or charcoal or graphite, whatever we're using, is do a little bit of hatching, if you like, just to create a different texture at the bottom of this bread. A slice of bread. Now we can leave it like this or we could do a little bit to make it a little bit darker in one corner if we so wished. Now some cross hatching as it's called. I'm just going to go back up here again and have my little piece of bread. There's a lovely aroma from this as well, folks, as it was baked yesterday, you know, so we're, I'm using the three, you know, the visual, the touch and the smell, which should um, allow me to get a better um, drawing, really, and a better, a, a truer drawing of, of the bread, if you like. And here, of course, we're concentrating on the texture, the visual and the, and the tactile. You can, of course, use anything at all in your kitchen. Um, an egg, they're, um, funnily enough, they look easy, okay, like a squashed circle, but they're really quite hard to draw properly, but they're great to practice on. You could use a bowl, you could use a cabbage, um, an onion, a potato, anything at all. They all have different types of textures. Now, if I find that there is too much of an area which is too samey. I can use my rubber and just get rid of some of those there. Okay. Now it's beginning to look more like um, a wall, a stone wall, or rather than a piece of bread. But that's good—a nice abstract take on the on the piece slice of bread there. Now I'm going to take my biro just briefly. Um, biro is usually associated with writing mainly, but um, artists are beginning, I think, more and more to use them and they can give a lovely line, um, quite different to pencil or graphite. You can see here that, again, I'm trying to vary the pressure I'm putting so to give a little bit more interesting. I don't know if I were to, say, concentrate on the corner there again. I can lean a little bit harder to accentuate that little corner if I so want it. And there's a little bit of an indentation there and I can do that as well. And here again, just getting some of the little details of the seeds and the other things that are in this little bread. And then the knobbly feeling that you get when you run your hand along it. It's very nice to be able to use a biro actually, because if you're sitting in a car waiting for somebody who's in shopping or at the chemist or waiting for somebody outside the school, you can just, you know, if you've nothing else to do, you can take out a biro and a scrap piece of paper and just draw. There might be a bird on a wire. There might be 
um, an old post box that looks interesting or people passing by um, and it's, it's very relaxing. I, I find it really wonderful. I often recommend to people to keep a little notebook in their handbag or their back pocket if they like drawing because amazing opportunities will occur and um, even the most ordinary things can be turned into something quite beautiful. And the more you practice, the better you'll get, of course, like everything. So I'll make this little bit up here a little bit denser. We'll do some hatching there like we had done in our, with our pencil. Now, before um, I leave you go over to Inga, um, I want to show you a couple of paintings from our collection at the Crawford Art Gallery, which have, um, I suppose, a domestic theme. And the first one is by Leo Whelan, and it was done in 1926. And it is called The Kitchen Window. And it's very interesting we're doing textures today because the more I look at this, the more textures I see, and there's a great contrast. You'll see there's a lovely, um, wooden cupboard here with a gingham um, curtain um, and you'll also see she's polishing some silverware there with a nice soft cloth different textures and then again you've got the cloth on the table and the wooden table and our next uh, painting we're featuring this week is by Edward Maguire and it was done more recently in 1977 and it's of the Dublin poet and philosopher Anthony Cronin. Again in a domestic scene, this is more humorous though. Um, you'll see we have a nice um, tailor's iron here and a delightful bone-handled knife, these old knives that you might be familiar with, and some pottery, and then a nice iron cooking pot. So thank you folks, and um, I'll hand you over to Inga.